<laughs> I thought I'd like made quite a few videos about the fact that the ISO is not connected to exposure in any way, shape, or form. Not with digital photography. We're not talking about the size of uh, silver halide grains on film for regular uh, film photography. Um, interestingly enough, and of course, you know, stupidity is everywhere. Somebody was commenting on another YouTube channel, and I don't read comments, especially on other YouTube photography channels, but I was watching a rather humorous video. And they said, Old Ken, meaning me, thinks that uh, ISO was not part of the exposure triangle. What an idiot. You know, <laughs> there was some comment like that, and, you know, that's well and fine. You know, stupidity is everywhere. Um, ISO is not connected to exposure. If there is a true exposure triangle, of course, there's only gain and time, gain being aperture, time obviously being shutter speed. The other one, if you need an exposure triangle, and really there is a, a, a tripartite, a three-point to exposure, is a gain and time, obviously, and the third one is S and R, signal-to-noise ratio. ISO is applied gain. I don't know if you've ever seen professional radios. There's a volume knob that's output, right? I think everybody knows what the hell a volume knob is. Gain, as a, as a ham radio operator and someone that screws around, at least they used to do a lot, professional radios, there's a knob called gain. Also, too, if you're a guitar player, there's a gain knob. That is input amplification. Now, if the signal is weak, not only in addition to amplifying the signal, you're amplifying the noise. This is the reason why there is SNR firmware, signal-to-noise ratio firmware, and it is really damn good. In Nikon, and I have to say it too, but in Sony. However, you can eliminate out a lot more of that in other cameras using SNR, uh, uh, excuse me, denoise, well, it's SNR firmware, not firmware, excuse me, SNR software, excuse me, like Topaz plugin and Lightroom, and there's like denoise projects. There's a lot of denoise uh, uh, signal processing for uh, images, uh, both uh, RAW and JPEG, although there's not a lot you can do with JPEG. There's uh, some stuff that you could do, but ISO is not part of exposure in digital photography. It is SNR, signal to noise ratio. The one thing that nobody ever really explained about ISO in digital photography is ISO is there to give you the freedom to adjust gain and time. Gain is interchangeable with aperture. Okay, let's just say aperture and shutter speed, right? So what ISO serves as as the fulcrum point, like on a seesaw. Or this is a fulcrum point, simplest analogy, that lets you screw around with aperture and shutter speed. Obviously, aperture for depth of field, shutter speed for either capturing the action or not capturing the action. You want some blur in there, whatever the effect is that you're going for. ISO, excuse me, ISO, and some cameras have not so awesome ISO. Nikon's uh, high ISO performance is really damn good. I mean, up at 40,000 ISO, and really, really, like, I almost can't see anything. Nikon's ISO performance is incredible. I mean, it blows the hell out of Fuji. The hell and back out of Fuji. However, that is only straight out of camera. Most people don't give a damn about that. Actually, a lot of people do give a damn about that because they're not software junkies. They don't uh, mess with uh, Photoshop, and a lot of them don't even mess with Lightroom. A lot of them, unfortunately, don't shoot RAW. If you own an expensive camera, including a Fujifilm, any Fujifilm, depends on what you define as expensive, anything a thousand bucks or over is expensive. Shooting JPEG only, obviously, is like having a Lamborghini and only driving it down to the grocery store in a 30 mile per hour uh, speed limit, right? It's like, wow, you, it's a nice Lamborghini. It's like, what do you use it for? Yeah, I drive down to the grocery store, you know. It's just like two miles down that. Well, it's like, well, isn't that nice? You know, you're not getting really anything out of it, so that's. The most perfect analogy for shooting JPEG instead of RAW, but the uh, loss of dynamic range. Whatever you think your camera's dynamic range is, if you have unnecessarily high ISO, it's like I say, it's really bright outside, and you're shooting an ISO 1000. It's like, what's the problem? What's the problem, man? You know, I'm capturing the shots nice and sharp. Yeah, the only problem is, is that you're telling the camera that you need to amplify the input captured signal. Remember, ISO is applied gain not at the sensor, but applied gain to the signal captured, or in this case, the image captured. You're amplifying what has been captured. Captured is a past tense word. Captured. Can I repeat that again? Captured. Applied gain. Same thing in ham radio. By the way, a camera, a digital camera, is no different than a professional ham radio. 
we have antenna gain and we have signal gain. I don't want to get too complicated on that, but we're applying gain to whatever signal that we actually have captured. In this case, if we're actually, well, I don't want to get too complicated. Then I'm going to confuse people about adjusting the gain of the antenna. But let's say I'm able to crank up the gain really good on a radio. It's like, well, I'm going to make my antenna more shitty. This is what people are doing when they're unnecessarily raising the ISO. It's really bright and sunny outside. There ain't no reason for you to be shooting at ISO 800, 1000. And you're doing it anyway. What you're doing is you're chopping the balls off the dynamic range. Let me repeat that. When you... <laughs> One example, which you could apply to a lot of stuff. If it's bright outside and you've got the ISO higher than it needs to be, you are castrating the dynamic range from your camera. Think about that one. Because ISO is there to let you screw around with aperture and shutter speed, one or the other and or both. ISO is a plaid gain. It is not part of the exposure triangle. The third part of the exposure triangle is SNR, signal to noise ratio. What this means is, is that, oh, it's bright and sunny outside. I'm going to drop it, say, Fuji, which is base ISO 200. Drop it down to 200, which is where it should be, plenty fast enough to capture most action. Shooting at 1 800th of a second, F, you know, even 5 6, well, whatever it is. You know, yeah, right, 1 800th of a second, you know, bright and sunny outside. Grass as you're shooting horses. You've got really good SNR. The sensor is getting good saturation. You're getting maximum allowable dynamic, or depending on the scene, you know. Let's just assume there's no really hardcore speculars and no super deep shadows. Shooting horses out on the green field. Of course, there are no perfect shooting situations. But idealized capacity for the full dynamic range of your camera. There ain't no reason to be jacking the ISO up. Because when you do that, then your camera has no idea what the hell you're shooting. It's like, well, this person needs ISO 800 for some unknown dumbass reason. So that means that I'm going to stop the aperture down. I mean, anyway, aperture priority, program mode, shutter priority. You crank up the ISO unnecessarily. Your camera thinks you need that higher ISO, even if you don't. And then it is going to adjust the aperture and shutter speed accordingly, one or the other, depending on its aperture priority, shutter priority, or program mode. And then you're going to castrate the dynamic range out of your potential picture or the picture that you just captured. ISO, if you don't think, I used to get, not in arguments, people used to try to argue with me, and some of them eventually apologize, like, oh my god, you're right, ISO is not part of exposure. It's like, well, yeah, just look up the word ISO invariance, just type in those words in a Google search, ISO invariance. So, and why has no, this is really important too, is it because of lack of intellect or what is it there's no other photography channel that has pointed out the fact that the third leg of the exposure triangle which of course is not ISO is SNR signal to noise ratio that is the third leg of exposure gain aperture time shutter speed gain and time exposure is gain and time but the variable and of course, that has to be discussed later at different times. I've discussed it before. The variable, if we have an X, exp uh, an X gain, an X, time, an X aperture, a set aperture, a set shutter speed, between two identical cameras, two identical lenses, what's the variable? This is hard to express. It's actually really easy to express. Gain in time. What is it that you actually have a different SNR? Well, actually, a different, uh, excuse me, different aperture you got the ISO cranked up and you don't actually have as good a signal to noise ratio on the sensor. I always think of a thousand things at a second. I apologize for doing that. This is always where I need notes in front of me, which even then it wouldn't help me because I'm always thinking of a thousand things at once. So I apologize for that momentary brain fart on my behalf. But uh, just talking about if you actually raise the ISO up, you're actually choking off the native signal to noise ratio at the sensor. Because while well, using the exact same cameras and exact same lenses, you're shooting the exact same thing at the exact same time, you actually have different uh, apertures and shutter speeds, and therefore you have different uh, dynamic range due to different. Because the first thing that's going to be that's going to happen is that your speculars are not going to be reduced on uh, by cranking up the ISO unnecessarily on the secondary camera. Rather, by stopping down the aperture and uh, increasing the shutter speed, you're choking the sensor of sufficient charge. Charge and saturation are the same thing. All your, what's in the back of a digital camera is no different than a really, really, really super complex 
uh, solar cell with RGB discriminators on it. That's all. That's all a digital camera sensor is. It is a super ultra high precision X megapixels. It's just a solar cell. If you actually take a solar cell and subdivide up the sections and stick uh, red, green, blue filters over it in a patterned array, and then make it millions of times smaller as far as each little part. I mean, that's all. That is all. <laughs> And uh, it's, not, it's irrefutable, too. That is all a camera sensor is, is a solar cell. And it works off of gain and time. This is also the case in solar cells, too. We talk about efficiency. In this case, we're talking about larger sensors, larger photo sites, better micro lens design. So given the exact same shutter speed, given the exact same aperture, we are able to have, with, inferior, with, excuse me, with superior design, micro lens design, and larger photo sites, a better SNR with the exact same gain in time to uh, from the exact same lens, for example. That's the point I was trying to get at like about five minutes ago when I had a brain fart. Someone's go, I hate you, down vote, whatever. At least I'm right. Nobody else talks about this stuff. Is it important for going out and taking pictures? Yeah, in this case it kind of is. You need to know that you shouldn't unnecessarily jack up your ISO because you're castrating the dynamic range off of your camera, not off the specular end, but off the shadow end. And uh, that's also important for micro contrast. You can have the best micro contrast lens in the world. Pay attention, girlfriend. You have the best micro contrast lens in the world, but if you unnecessarily crank up the ISO, you are robbing the camera sensor of sufficient good signal to noise ratio. You know what bad signal to noise ratio is when you tune in a radio and the radio station is too damn far away and it's and you know the the music breaks in it's like well that sucks I'm gonna change radio stations. That's really bad signal to noise ratio. That's what happens when you crank up the ISO. Cranking up the ISO unnecessarily on your camera is like being really far away from that radio station that you love, you're driving away in the other direction, and then the radio station starts to crackle, and it crackles more, and it crackles more, and then it becomes, oh shit, I can't listen to this anymore. That's what ISO is. ISO, cranking it up unnecessarily, destroys your SNR. SNR, that would be like fidelity in your radio. Like, wow, this station's coming in good. Five by five, you're listening to 93.9 The Rock. Next playing, Madonna. Like a virgin. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Hope you like these videos. If you do, click the link below. If not, tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Okay, bye.